The wages of sin is death, but the grace of God, life everlasting, in Christ Jesus our Lord. Beloved souls of Christ, we all must seek our best interest. Now we have our chance being alive to the workings of grace in us. For we are here today with a purpose, not only to fulfill the commandment of God, but to seek His grace for our spiritual advancement. I say to you now, this seeking of grace does not end here today and pick up again next Sunday. No, for as our Lord says, I will send you as sheep among these ravening wolves. He speaks of today. So we need to fight them off and have a continual increase in God's grace. As the spiritual writers have said, there is no standing still in the spiritual life. You're either moving forwards or backwards. But also we need a constant seeking of grace for those we wish to convert, realizing it's God's grace that does the converting. However, we do need to do our part. We need to live by example. We need to have lead by example, showing ourselves to be good trees. And so I ask, what are our fruits? What have we done? What do we have to show for our efforts? Do we go out of our way to help someone without seeking a reward? but seeking to make a return to God. The wages of sin is death, but grace, life everlasting. So if this is the wage, what is the work? Striving toward union with our Lord is our work. We need to have this desire in mind in all of our actions. Union with the blessed sacrament. And by this we make a return to our Lord. We give, them our, we give him our souls as he has already purchased them. And so it's for us to make good on it, to do our part in securing our union with our Lord. For as you have used your members to serve uncleanness and iniquity unto iniquity, so now yield your members to serve justice unto sanctification. What is sanctification but an elevation to higher things? And ultimately the highest thing, union, as I said. Union with God himself. We're called to be with him. He wants us to be with him. He desires our souls more than we desire life. And where is God's life, where is it in us, but in his grace in us, his grace flowing through us. This is true union. And so remaining in the state of sanctifying grace always, always striving to keep that union. And now you may be troubled for you wonder, why then has the means of daily sacramental grace left you. Do not worry. God always gives you what you need and never more than you can bear. All the trials, all the struggles of the day, he gives you the grace to overcome them. And so we need to seek grace to be in union with our Lord, to keep that union. But to seek grace, we have to be aware of ourselves. We have to be aware of our daily tendencies, these habitual temptations that we have. We need to avoid them. We need to cut them down and narrow them down to the very minimal amount. That it's more easily for us, more easy for us to turn away from them and turn to God's grace. And now we have a great opportunity to know our need of grace. A big step in our progress 
being aware of our need. It moves us not to rely on ourselves, but to rely on God's grace. To rely on our Lord, knowing, as he said, without me you can do nothing. Truly understanding this. And that's why it's so very important. At all times, we need to turn to prayer in every struggle that we have. Temporal, spiritual. Always ever be ready in every sort of temptation. As, it, as I've said before, the, the book, The Key to Prayer, The Key to Salvation, we only sin when we lay down our arms. We only sin when we stop praying. And so we need to continually fight. And remember, yes, without God, we can do nothing, but with him, we can do all things. Saints literally moved mountains. But now we can see God drawing us, drawing us more, making us hungry for opportunities of his grace as our daily inspirations so that we seek it not only on Sundays but so that we live it not only here at the church but in every aspect of our lives everywhere we go we take our faith and we take this union with God and that we go out and light the world on fire with zeal with zeal for living a good life, showing them the fruits of God's grace. Our charity, our joy, our peace. Having patience with others. Giving freely. Being mild, m meek and humble of heart. And so they can truly say, by our fruits, we know them to be Catholics. We know them to be in union with our Lord. We know them to be living the life of Christ. And that they may say, they are definitely good trees. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.